dear students of mba fourth semester political science db post graduate college varanasi today we will hand, deal with uh, the final chapter of your course on conflict management and peace studies this chapter deals with conflict and peace making peace making capabilities of religion education and media the role of religion in conflict and peace building has uh, been depicted in binary terms it is seen as a source of violence by many while many consider religions as a field that helps in reconciliation reconciliation of conflicts and in peace building in recent decades religion has assumed unusual prominence in global affairs faith based terrorism radicalization has been an important aspect of conflicts in recent times we have seen many groups in recent pasts as well as in the present times that have not only triggered conflict but have also given it an international form the events of 9/11 the conflagration of iraq the aggressive assertiveness of quasi theocratic iran these all confirm the popular imagination the popular understanding that religion lies behind most of the contemporary international conflict why religion because religion makes you believe makes people believe that eternal salvation would be at stake if you don't believe in these ideas or this set of ideas this makes compromise difficult and in many cases sinful religion is also important because as a central part of many individuals identity any threat to one's beliefs is considered as threat to one's very being this is a primary motivation for ethno religious nationalists some aspects of religion that make it susceptible to being a latent source of conflict a hidden source of conflict include the fact that most religions have accepted some other other kind of dogmas or articles of belief that followers of that particular religion must accept without question this can lead to inflexibility and intolerance in the face of other beliefs after all it is the word of god how can one compromise at the same time scriptures and dogma are often vague ambiguous and open to interpretation therefore conflicts arise can arise over whose interpretation is the correct one a conflict can ultimately not be solved cannot be solved because there is no arbiter the winner generally is the interpretation that attracts most followers or is more popular however those followers must also be motivated to action although almost invariably the majority of any faith hold moderate views they are often more complacent whereas extremists are motivated to bring their interpretation of god's will to fruition religion religious extremists or religious religion extremism can contribute to conflict escalation increase of conflict they see radical measures as necessary to fulfilling god's wishes fundamentalists of any religion tend to take a a kind of homogeneous view of the world if the world is a struggle between good and evil it is hard to justify compromising with a devil any sign of moderation can be decried as sailing out or you know as as abandoning god's will some groups such as america's new christian right Pakistan's Jamaat-e-Islami have operated largely through constitutional means though they still pursue intolerant aims 
in circumstances where moderate ways are not perceived to have produced results whether social political or economic the people may turn to extreme interpretations for solutions without legitimate mechanisms for religious groups to express their views they may be more likely to resort to violence hezbollah in lebanon and hamas in palestine have engaged in violence but they also gained supporters through social service work when the government is perceived as doing little for the population religious re- revivalism is very powerful in that it can provide a sense of pride and purpose in people but in places such as sri lanka and sudan it has produced very strong form of illiberal illiberal non liberal nationalism that has periodically led to intolerance and discrimination some religious groups such as the kach and the kahane chai parties in israel uh, or egypt's islamic jihad group jihadi group they consider violence to be a duty those who call for violence see themselves as divinely directed and therefore the obstacles must be eliminated with so much emphasis on religion as a source of conflict the role of religion as a force in peace making is usually overlooked religious affiliation and conviction often motivates communities to advocate particular peace related government policies religious communities also directly oppose repression and promote peace and reconciliation religious leaders and institutions can mediate in conflict situations can serve as communication link between opposing sides and provide training in peace making methodologies some religious figures have been able to use their positions of authority to work towards peace and to forward the cause of justice pope john paul ii for instance played a very important role in lebanon in poland and in haiti when conflicts were going on as respected members of society individual national religious leaders have often been at the forefront of efforts to deny impunity and bring an end to fighting for instance local bishops have served as mediators in civil wars in mozambique burundi and liberia the all in the the all sorry uh, the all africa conference of churches brought a temporary end to sudanese civil war the civil war that was going in sudan going on in sudan in 1972 in part through the through prayers at critical points in negotiations and invoking both christian and muslim texts this form of religious peace making garners less public attention but is growing in importance another form of religious peace making can be interfaith dialogue developing and promoting interfaith dialogue interreligious dialogue rather than seeking to resolve a particular conflict such form of dialogue aims at diffusing interfaith tensions which may cause future conflict or derive from previous conflicts interfaith dialogues is a, a these are expanding even in places where interreligious tensions are highest at its core interreligious dialogues bring together those from different faith traditions religious traditions for conversations dialogues or conversations can take a range of forms different forms and have a variety of goals in mind it may involve any label of participants from elite groups to grassroots and rich to poor so through discussions groups and individuals they may come to a better understanding of the other faiths other faith traditions religious traditions and of the many points of agreement that may exist between them motivated by desire to help those less fortunate many religious groups have started their ngos for humanitarian assistance this has also been a very important aspect of religion and peace making 
the desire is to re relieve suffering here whether due to natural disaster man made calamity many are also engaged in long range development projects at times however these projects have the unintended consequences of creating that exacerbity conflict that problem combined with growing recognition that peace building will aid will help in the sustainability of humanitarian assistance and development programs this has led a quite number of quite a number of these organizations which build peace building components into their work humanitarian assistance programs that also help peace by promoting poverty redu reduction and and addressing social uh, and economic inequality they uh, they may also support development of civil society organizations such as we have uh, many such organizations today like world vision like mercy corps mercy crops um and there is this khalis uh, sorry sadars group the sikhs group that has been helping so many uh, people different communities in conflict areas throughout the world everywhere across uh, countries now let's go over to media mass media often plays a role very important role in conflict basically their uh, roles can take two uh, different and opposed forms either the media takes an active part in conflict and has responsibility for increasing violence or stays independent and out of conflict thereby contributing to the resolution of conflict and elevation of violence <coughs> which role the media takes in a given conflict and in the phases before and after depends on a complex set of factors including the relationship the media has with the actors in the conflict and the independence the media has over the power holders in the society the balkan conflicts demonstrated the growing recognition of the importance of local media coverage in shaping and developing conflict on the ground this has been best documented in mark thompson's ground breaking um, account of the role of the local media in former yugoslavia this uh, document known as forging war it shows how the media helped the destruction of yugoslavia the rise to power of extreme nationalism and forging a conflict between groups of people who had lived together peacefully all their lives it was a frightening example of how a society can disintegrate how fear can be exploited by a power of a media in the hands of those unscrupulous enough to wield it as a weapon war was neither inevitable nor the only not the only means of resolving conflicts that lay behind the breakup of yugoslavia the local media played an important role in preparing the ground for war in yugoslavia by ensuring that public opinion was mobilized behind the different participants media campaigns between rival media outlets prefigured the war itself as regional communist leaderships mutated into nationalists they saw true to their communist heritage the various media as important instruments of policy were prepare prepared to use them one of the underestimated complications of the middle east conflict also between palestinians and the israeli is inflammatory media on both the sides in one case following the death of israeli soldiers and settlers in gaza strip in uh, 2004 the hakish the very aggressive commentator one lady nadia matar of settler radio arthru 7 she called on 13th may for last scale military action against the arab nazi murderers in her report she said we should have erased the whole arab village from the from which the nazi murderers who carried out this massacre had come it 
Israelis, meanwhile, can listen to a steady outputs of anti-Semitism from the official state media of surrounding Arab countries. So, it went on like this and the climate became vicious politically and uh, there was large scale violence after this. So, this is how media reports can also not only trigger violence but can also promote violence. The growing uh, recognition of the crucial role that media can play in helping provoke conflict has also led many to examine how the media can play a very constructive role in resolving conflict. This created considerable controversy should journalism stay detached even from horrific events unfolding around them or should it take a stand. In case of a crisis or a conflict, international media can attract worldwide, worldwide attention. The mass media is a pervasive part of the daily life especially in industrialized countries and thus able to shine a light on conflicts wherever in the world, in different parts of the world. Since most are armed conflicts these days have governmental and not territorial reasons, the parties are often concerned with making sure that the majority of the people are on their side which bears a lot of potential for misrepresenting facts and trying to seize control over distribution of information. For this reason, intervention of unbiased and free global media is important not only for the world public but also for people directly affected by conflicts. The number of conflicts however that gets international attention is very small. Therefore, local media is very important in this context. Broadcasting news by using community radios can help people help reach people in different areas. Even with different languages more easily. Internal conflicts do not occur spontaneously. But they tend to have a history. Local media usually have a deeper understanding of the existing political structures. The participants of conflict as well as the changes preceding the outbreak violence. The media therefore can not only influence society before the conflict by recognizing and properly addressing the issue but also afterwards. Unlike international media covering conflicts, local media is more recognized in, within the society, local society. So, has the ability to accelerate and magnify the fears or reduce them. So, it must always, the local media should be trained to help grow peace journalism. Now, this concept of peace journalism was also supported by Johan Galto, is being still supported. For peace journalism explores the backgrounds and context of conflict formation, presenting the causes and options on every side and not just both the side. It gives voice to the views of rival parties from all labels. Offer uh, it also offers creative ideas for conflict resolution, development, peacemaking and peacekeeping. It often exposes lies, cover up attempts, culprits on all sides and reveals excesses committed by and suffering inflicted on peoples of all parties. It pays attention to peace stories and post-war developments. Just like peace journalism, there is also a concept of peace education. Peace education <coughs> refers to the global debate. It is no longer a local debate, peace education, but global debate about education and conflict. That research priorities and questions regarding professional practice in any discipline should be organized under two areas. First, provision of education in conflict and protracted crisis. Any discipline must include in its education while educating the uh, uh, or training the students about this. 
Second, the role of education in fueling conflict and pro or promoting peace. Peace education activities often promote knowledge, skills and attitudes that help people either to prevent the occurrence of conflict, resolve conflicts peacefully or create social conditions conducive for peace. Core values that are promoted in peace education include non-violence, social justice. Non-violence is manifested through values such as respect for human rights, freedom and trust. Social justice is realized by principles of equality, responsibility and solidarity. Peace education and peace building are considered today as intrinsically linked. The United Nations actions for peace building include education as one of the most important components. For peace building initiatives to remain sustainable, it is vital, it is very important that attitudes towards war and violence are transformed and translated into long term behavioral changes which seek alternative solution to armed conflict. After all, it is in the minds of human beings that war begins and it must be ended there. So with this we end um, this syllabus, we have completed it. If you need more lectures or any of the topics included in this syllabus, please do let me know. I keep checking the comment section and I hope to get your comments about this. Thank you so much. Stay safe. Stay home.